Hello, Internet friends. Do you have any of those relatives? You know, the ones, usually but not always, a little on the older side who figured out social media just well enough to inundate your Facebook with viral outrage about the president being a secret lizard man, or the government putting mind control drugs in tap water, or chemtrails? Or how having to push a specific button on the phone for English, or really how any sign whatsoever that the cultural makeup of civilization has continued to evolve is exactly like Germany invading Poland? Well, if you do, chances are you've already been introduced with the accompaniment of some very uncomfortable language and lots of extraneous exclamation points to the for some reason controversial trailer for Annie, a new movie version of a popular 1977 Broadway musical already filmed twice before. The big deal, supposedly, is that the main 2014 update to the story is a predominantly black cast including Jamie Foxx and Beast of the Southern Wilds, Kavanzahane Wallace. So basically this is the Heimdall moment for that one aunt and uncle you never see who know the outside world only as reported to them by cable news shows. I imagine this movie will be okay, there's a lot of talented people involved, and frankly, the 1982 movie version that I think is the way most modern audiences know the material is really not all that good. Where I'm at is, forget whether or not Annie is appropriately white. What I want to know is, will it be appropriately weird? See, Annie is a franchise. She's been around for over 90 years, and she's always been really freaking weird. You see, Today, the musical is what most of the world is most familiar with, but I imagine a slim majority is at least tangentially still aware that it was actually an adaptation of the legendary long-running newspaper comic strip Little Orphan Annie, begun in 1924 by Harold Gray. What's it about? Well, okay, so there's this billionaire named Mr. Warbucks, so named because he made his fortune selling munitions in World War One, and this is a comic from the 20s, whose wife is a horrible person who temporarily takes in a plucky, super resourceful orphan girl named Annie, basically intending to use her as a social accessory. But it turns out Mr. Warbucks thinks Annie is the coolest damn person he's ever met, and they become total best buds, much to the chagrin of status-obsessed new money Mrs. Warbucks, who resents that her meal-ticket husband is showering affection on a young girl he immediately insists should just call him Daddy Warbucks. And holy crap, the subtext here is so f creepy when you read it out loud, right? Seriously, someone call up Benson and Stabler. There's something scary going down at the Warbucks place. Uh, yeah. So for a while, the formula of this strip was Annie having to thwart Mrs. Warbucks constant attempts to kick her back to the orphanage or the streets whenever Daddy Warbucks so much as turns his back. She'd get into adventures and mysteries in the course of these expulsions, sometimes saving herself, but other times saved by Warbucks, who was Gray's philosophical self-insert character, the idealized, noble capitalist Superman who could get Annie out of any scrape if he just threw enough money at it. Incidentally, Jamie Foxx is playing him in the new movie, but the character is now named Will Stacks, though for a while his first name was going to be Benjamin Stacks. Ha ha ha. Gray also used Annie's adventures as a megaphone for his political beliefs and pet causes, framing storylines to attack child labor laws, unions, local government officials who ticked him off in some way, the New Deal, and especially President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. In fact, when FDR won his fourth term as president, which you actually can't do anymore, Gray symbolically killed Daddy Warbucks, then resurrected him when FDR himself died. Remember, this strip is technically about the plucky Neo-Dickensian adventures of an orphan. Eh, you know what, might as well dust this thing off. <clears throat> Comics have pretty much always been... WEIRD! But he also added mysterious and exotic helper characters like Punjab, Mr. Am, and the Asp, and having the heroes go off on globetrotting adventures or fighting crime, pirates, smugglers, and protecting the Warbucks' fortune. If this is all sounding a little familiar, yeah, though inspired by Karl Barks' famous Disney comics, DuckTales was pretty much a direct lift of the Little Orphan Annie scenario, which is right up there with Tintin in terms of its massive influence on the kid adventure genre. Believe it or not, even though Grey died in 1968, the strip was still running until 2010, where it ended on a cliffhanger. And in 1977, Charles Stout and Martin Sharnan made it into a Broadway show, shortening the title to just Annie and junking almost all of the more fantastical elements for a smaller-scale revamped origin story. Daddy Warbucks temporarily adopts Annie as a publicity stunt, realizes he loves her, they thwart some bad guys, sing the two songs that kept this thing popular for damn near 40 years now, and that's the end. Here's what's nuts, though. They kept Gray's tendency to awkwardly shove politics into the story, but reversed them. In this version, there are scenes swatting at President Hoover while FDR appears as a character who helps save the day, and then everyone sings about how great the New Deal will be. Yeah, the musical of Annie is basically a giant middle finger to the thematic and philosophical underpinnings of the original and its creator, just like the Starship Troopers movie. And then in the 1982 movie version, made just as the Reagan years were gearing up, this all gets downright schizophrenic, not just because Punjab and the Asp get bizarrely reinserted into the mythos either. President Roosevelt is still on hand, but we also get a random scene where a communist terrorist tries to kill Daddy Warbucks with a bomb because he's a living symbol of how well capitalism works. 
for real. So what are they going to do with this new one? Probably nothing that bizarre. The comic ended precisely because basically no one has really cared all that much about that version of Annie for decades, so we're probably looking at a semi-realistic modern riff on just the musicals without much of the history or the baggage. I mean, I can imagine some kind of reference to Punjab or somebody turning up, and maybe they'll keep up the franchise tradition of straining to involve politics since Fox's character is now a politician who conscripts Annie to help his image with voters, but that's probably as far as it's going to go. I mean, the original Annie blew up a Nazi submarine and wound up fronting a children's war effort group called the Junior Commandos, which was so popular it actually got turned into a real thing during the war. Whatever happens in the new version, I severely doubt they're gonna, like, airdrop Annie into Afghanistan to take out some Al-Qaeda guys. Just a guess. I'm Bob. Remember to drink your Ovaltine!